Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture on the probability and statistics. Today we will discuss about Fisher Newman factorization theorem. We will discuss the short proof of this factorization theorem. Myself, Dr. Gar, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute, India. So first of all, what is this factorization theorem and why there is so important? Because it will provide you the necessary and the sufficient condition for any of the distribution to set to be a sufficient statistics. Now, here the first question arises is what is the sufficient uh, statistics? Although we have already discussed in our previous lecture, so let me rec recall quickly within a one minute what is the sufficient statistic. Any of the estimated t of the sample space x is said to be the sufficient for the parameter theta if the conditional probability of this x over this parameter over this estimated t is independent of theta. That means whenever you want to say the conditional probability of the x over this uh, estimated t is it is independent of theta then you can say it is a sufficient estimator or you can also define like this way if you have uh, any of the random variable x with the parameter theta like if you have x is a binomial uh, binomial distribution uh, binomial random variable then theta is nothing but my n and p if you have the Poisson distribution x is my Poisson random variable then the only parameter is my lambda and so on and p is my density function probability density function of this uh, x then any of these statistics t is said to be the sufficient for this parameter theta if the distribution of the x over the condition this is independent of this theta that means whenever you want to find the probability of this over this parameter theta that must be independent of this here that means if they are independent it means the probabilities are same now here question arises is what is the meaning of the independent of theta here you can see in both the definition the major concept is independent of theta so what is the meaning of independent of theta it doesn't means that it doesn't involve any of the like say if i say f of x is say 1 by 2 and you can see that this doesn't belongs to the theta can i say this is independent of theta you can't say exactly because you have to also check that the domain does not contain theta for example you can see this is a function which is a constant which is independent of theta that's true but you can see the domain of this that is a x is dependent on this theta it means this function is dependent on theta and that's a very important concept in this proof of this fisher newman's factorization theorem you can see again this one by this is independent of theta but the domain is not hence it is not independent of theta if domain is also independent of theta function is also independent of theta then only you can say the function is independent of here now what is the fisher newman factorization theorem that's the statement of this theorem if you have any of the random variable x whose density function is my p dependent upon the parameter theta then any of these statistics t is said to be the sufficient estimator if and only if if and only if this density function you can express in terms of the product of the two function that is a g and h what is a g g is a function of the theta and everywhere where is the fun x is dependent is throw only of the statistics are there it means if if your statistics will be like of this x of i then you can say this is the function of the x but it's dependent only on this t r there while the second function that is the h of x is a function of the x only and independent of theta here again remember this independent of theta is the dependent uh, is the definition as we have discussed in previous slide now how you can prove that the proof is very simple how you can prove that since it is provide the if and only if you have to prove in the both side so let's assume firstly this condition holds then our target is to prove it is a sufficient estimator and then we will take it vice versa so first part is let's assume that uh, this conditions hold B. then what is your target is your target is to show t of x is my sufficient estimator so in order to prove that is a sufficient estimator what you want to prove you want to prove that this density function is independent of theta that's our that's the definition of the sufficient now how you can prove that 
proof is very simple so if you look about this because our target is here what is that this is nothing but my conditional probability so we can start with the definition of the conditional probability so we all know that probability of the x t it can be written like here but now we want a function of x comma of this so i can simply write from here to be this one this is a x comma t so i can replace this parameter t as of t dependent upon the theta now if you look about the this uh, numerator part what is the meaning of that so if you remember that the joint density function what is the meaning of that f of x comma y that means you have to define a function which are dependent on the x as well as y so here in the numerator part if you look about that can you define any of the function which are dependent upon the x and the t by theta is there so you can see here this is the function which are depend upon the x as well as t by theta so what is the value of the numerator this is nothing but my here that is p of x upon theta it's clear now what is the denominator part if you look about here what is the meaning of the p of so look at that if you have the function of the f of x comma y say and your target is to find the value of the f of y can you find the value of the f of y from f of x comma y yes you can easily do that what is that this is nothing but my marginal density function so it means this value the denominator part you can compute as a marginal density function of this joint function that is p of this so now here this is the function of the x comma y so we need the marginal of this so that means the collection of all those values of the x so that means x is nothing but my here you can substitute this value that is by here and since the integration is with respect to x this part is my constant with respect to x over this parameter specific statistic t so i can take it and this part is taken as outside now i can substitute this value as a here this value as a here and you can see this value will be cancel out and the remaining part is my here now now you can see this is nothing but independent of this theta that is it means this parameter is my sufficient statistics that's the proof of this first part how you can do the other part is that means you can initially assume that this is a sufficient estimator then your target is to prove this is here what is the meaning of this sufficient estimator again that means this is uh, independent of theta once it is independent of theta what is the value of this density function this is nothing but my here because it is independent of theta now your target is to start from here that is again this is the conditional probability so we can start with the definition of the conditional probability of here you can see i can take this value here now our target is to find this value so uh, that's a very simple again how you can do that that's what is the value of this part since the statistics t is a function of the x so what is the portion of x comma theta because we need this value so i can write this as function of theta is there now x comma t of this so now you can see this is the value of this i can find this numerator part i can take this as a multiply so what is that this is nothing but my here can you find this value what is the value of this you can see this value is my here so this is nothing but my p of t now you can see this what is the value of the x p of x comma t you can see this is the t is a function of the x only x is a function of the x only so it means this is the function of x only here this is a function of theta and t also so that's the proof of this because we need a one function which is dependent only on the x so what is the h of x h of x is nothing but my density function of x comma t this is my function which are dependent on the x only while this is the function which are depending upon the t r so it means this is a required proof so this is a necessary this is a necessary part we have and this is the sufficient proof of this and hence this theorem will be proved so that's a simple short proof of this factorization theorem we will see in the next class about the fusion newman criteria examples which is already available here you can see the playlist uh, testing of the hypothesis channel name dr hrishkar where you can find the minimum variance unbiased fusion newman criteria kramer i inequalities rao blackman and many more are there and its proof are there you can simply follow this playlist testing of the hypothesis till then you can simply like share and subscribe this channel for more updated videos 
बेस्ट ऑफ लक स्टूडेंट्स हैप्पी लर्निंग